Southern Nevada as we are in the menacing new Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. The atmosphere here electric. No matter the venue, the home folks love their silver and black. They are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Raiders coming back out here for their next possession on offense. And, Charles, they got a week one victory at Carolina, 34-30. Of course, their first win is the Las Vegas Raiders to open the 2020 season. Josh Jacobs, he was the star of the day. Three touchdown runs. And, and this was an offense CD, remember, that last year struggled some, but there wasn't much struggling in week one. No, there was not. And I'm going to go ahead and commend you right off the top. You don't have to put any money in the fine jar. Las Vegas Raiders, you nailed it right at the beginning. I'm so proud of you. And how about the way this team has been building over the last two seasons? Josh Jacobs, their number one pick of their first round pick last year. He had a big day, three touchdown runs. And you mentioned they struggled before, but now they're getting it together. 24th in scoring in offense last year. They scored on six of their first eight possessions. They talked about it all offseason. We can move the ball, but let's find a way to get it in the end zone. And they did that at Carolina. And coming up Monday night, they get to open that new spaceship in the desert hosting New Orleans in what will be a battle of two 1-0 teams. That should be a lot of fun. Now second and 11 from the 32. Throwing now is Carr. It's a screen to Richard. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. Tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay taking the field again here, Charles. And before this next drive, let's visit what was easily the most anticipated game of Week 1, their game against New Orleans. New Orleans getting the better of the Buccaneers, 34-23. Of course, it was the debut of Tom Brady in Pewter. Uh, against Say it again. In, Say it again. Oh, Pewter? Yeah, that's, that's the color, right? Tom Brady in Pewter. We've known this was coming, yet finally it was here. And I don't know about you, but it still seems surreal to see Tom Brady in that uniform. Yeah, it was strange, and unfortunately a couple of costly interceptions for TB12 that really helped New Orleans win this football game. Yeah, and, and look, he's going to play better down the road. His head coach Bruce Arians said it really well. He came out lighting it up. But then they had some poor drives, penalties, turnovers. That's what cost them. And, of course, they ran into the three-time defending division champs, the New Orleans Saints. That's a good football team. So that's okay. One game, they'll get better, but it's going to take a little bit of time with all these new pieces being added in Tampa. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. <laughs> Brady drops it to Jones in the flat. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. Again, it's Brady. He's got Evans. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Brady to Evans that time. First down, Tampa. 
Oh, how about to start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. Brandon, lest my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, that's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs have taken a first-quarter lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turning into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point put through by Suckup, and that makes the score 7-0. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Jalen Richard now on the return. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. They'll run on first down. Richard. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. And he's got the hook up to Rhodes. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there.
from midfield. Here's Carr. His throw is going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Carr. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. JPP cruising in for the sack that time. If Jason Pierre-Paul just manages to stay on the field and play 16 games, we could have double-digit sack numbers and then some because over his first two seasons in Tampa Bay, 21 sacks, earned himself a new contract, but hasn't been fully healthy. If Jason Pierre-Paul is that guy, look out. We'll see more plays as we just saw there. A beautiful fake. on the offense as they take over. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all. It'll be second and ten. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater. He just made a great play there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Throwing now is Brady. He'll set up the screen to McCall. And there is a flag. So a big second down pickup. But will it hold? So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Here's Brady. And he finds Brady. Get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. And there's a nice catch there by Rob Gronkowski. We all know the story. Came out of retirement, got himself traded to Tampa Bay from New England in order to reconnect with his favorite quarterback. And no one has caught more Tom Brady touchdowns than Gronk, and he expects to add to that total in Tampa Bay. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski. Complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. A seven-yard pickup. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Brady. To Evans on the slam. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Brady again. That's caught by Howard. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete.
incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Brady to throw again. And he's got Miller. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 16. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 at a first down. First down, Buccaneers. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, I know defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited by what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. Second and goal from the sixth this time. They'll keep it on the ground with McCoy this time. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Working from the gun, it's Brady. The Raider defense strong on that one in coverage, and now it's fourth. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Now Ryan Suckup will come on and try the field goal. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. ready to take the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And they work this well up field across the 45. Up there, 21 yards. First and 10 at the 48 yard line. <laughs> 10 nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Raiders 10, Raiders nothing. First down, Richard, and he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. He's across three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's a pickup of three, brings up second and seven. Second down and seven. Shotgun now for Carr. 
Trying to set up the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Brian Edwards, but now it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Operating from the gun. And incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air, and that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Brady now on first down. He completes it to Evans. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Mike Evans has been so good downfield. I think that sometimes we end up taking him for granted. When you look back at what he's done each year in the league, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver each and every time. Now paired with the prolific Tom Brady, those numbers could really jump. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hit route. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 20. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, whenever you talk about players that really broke out in the 2019 season, you better add Chris Godwin to that list. Over 1,300 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. He was second among receivers last season receiving yards per game at 95. This guy combines great body control, excellent strength, and terrific route running ability to become a really big downfield threat. Nicholas a gain of three, second down. A three yard the passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the shotgun, it's a give to McCoy. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and inches situation. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. It's a gain of seven. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up to throw. Aaron, this one out for Evans. And that's going to be incomplete. A good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. The Bucks on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. To throw is Brady. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 45-yard line. Brady finding Godwin there for a Buccaneer first. That time a slant. Brady, in general, on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate. But most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
end result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Second down at six now from the 42. So that'll back him up five. Second down, here's Brady. And his throw here is incomplete. Brady. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The Bucks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and 11. Now Brady. This one out for Evans. And unable to connect. Incomplete. I give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. But one thing's for sure. When you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, Three punts isn't a bad thing, but when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Second down. It's Jacobs. And they'll bring him down at the 27 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 yards. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Oh, you know, that did not feel good. Vita Vea with the sack there. And we know he's a big-time presence on the defensive line, especially against the run. But he'll surprise you with his quickness and his upfield agility in order to get to the quarterback. If you're blocking him, it's going to be a long afternoon or evening. A tough proposition. Attempted and intercepted. and 10 at the 48-yard line. So after the INT, it's Brady. He's got his big tight end, Gronkowski. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards, the pick up there. There's a complete to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed, I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On second down, it's McCoy. And he's going to be close to a first down as he gets this to the Raiders' 35. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. 
So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Brady now to throw. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. The rookie, Damon Arnett, picks it. And they will finally get it as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. Brady's pass. Intercepted. They'll run on first down. Richard, they'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. He's brought down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun. Carter. was a nice catch and not by the guy you thought it was going to be how about the defender turning into an offensive player as soon as the ball hits his hands and off he goes off to the races and into the end zone oh, yeah. so suck up for the extra point he's got it and it's 17 nothing makes the score buccaneers 17 raiders nothing So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. You want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, it I think you just called it desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. Game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Carr. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Tackled by Adamican Sue. It's a gain of three. Brings up third and four. The Raiders on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. Fourth down. 
And what would the dive look that time on defense? Just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They've had a very solid first half, and as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now. And when you put together a game plan on offense, you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario, right? Hey, we're going to score. These are the plays that are going to do it. But you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to next? The adjustment to the adjustment. Exactly. So I can't wait to see if we come out of the half how they're going to go about doing things. Do you just keep running what you ran before, or do you go to your counters expecting those adjustments to happen? Before that, we'll see the end here of this first half. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Brady's throw there complete. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Tampa Bay. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Four receivers in the formation here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and three. Again, it's Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's caught. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, here's Brady. He completes this into the hands of Miller. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And down he goes, brought down a Raiders sack. Nick Kwiatkowski able to maneuver in for the sack. And that's a sight no Tampa fan wants to see, nor does Tom Brady want to feel. They've got to keep him upright so he can get damage done downfield with those terrific receivers and really good tight ends. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. He's got his running back, LaShawn McCoy. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Taking it about the one. 
And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially, nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Shotgun now for Brady. And Watson has it right side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Now a draw play. This is McCoy. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. The tackle there by LaMarcus Joyner. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second and five now. Brady. And this is caught by Evans. Midfield before going out of bounds. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. On first down, Brady. This into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. That catch good for only a couple. To Ronald Jones. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 46-yard line. Second and eight. They go back to the ground with Jones. And he's going to be close to a first down as he gets this to the Raiders' 39. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and inches situation. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. They'll go again to Jones. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. He's tackled the pickup of five yards, first down Tampa. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. He was brought down at the hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Out of the shotgun, it's McCoy. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Well, if this defense has any hopes of getting back into this game, they've got to start right here and keep these guys out of the end zone. That's a good step one on that play. One back in the game, that's Jones, second and goal. 
They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. Working from the gun, it's Brady. His pass caught at the four. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. Suck up on for the field goal. A 23-yard attempt. Suckup's kick is good. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. This will come out to the 25. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. And Dominican Sue makes the tackle. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after them now. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Once again, it's Jacobs. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get them much at all. No, not at all. That leaves them with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Shotgun now for Carr. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Levante David with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. What, he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. At their own and Tampa Bay trots out there now. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. On second down now. It's McCoy. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And the Raiders. 
Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and he's got him complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Brady to Gronk, a familiar ring to that one, and it's a Buccaneers first down. Buccaneers. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Tackled and this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. 38-yard line, second and nine. Here's Brady to throw. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 15 yards on the play, first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. for the touchdown as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. You know, in golf, they often talk about playing the course and not worrying about what the other players are doing, what their scores are. That's essentially what we're seeing from this offense. They're just having fun and doing what they feel like doing today. And that stretches the lead to 27. Makes the score Buccaneers 27, Raiders nothing. Bradley. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out and still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. They go back to the ground, this time Jacobs. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Jacobs, the ball carrier. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. is much more difficult third and eight operating from the gun car he'll let this go deep for rugs and that's going to be incomplete 
The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. It's fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he'll come on a kick for a sixth time tonight. Six yards on the punt with no return. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. Second and five. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Working with second and five now. The give is to Jones. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off the game. On second down, it's Jones. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. I know we're there of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. First down carry by Jones. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. One yard yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up the throw. His throw incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. Third down here. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On third down, here's McCoy. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. So they went a little cautious there on third and long. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Remember, they're playing with a lead right now. So getting a first down, yes, that would be great. But even more importantly, take care of the football. No turnovers, no big plays for the other team, and keep the clock moving. Can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at the 39 yard line. He'll throw from the gun. That's complete to Richard, the running back. 
car. Three yards the gain there, second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 42-yard line. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. From the gun, Carr. Reception here by Rhodes. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 15 yards on the play, first down. But we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. Trying to get it that time to Brian Edwards. And that'll bring up second down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Second and ten. To throw again. Carr. That's into the hands of Edwards. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. A gain of nine brings up third and one. The Raiders on third down. They're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Car to throw again. And that is incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They go with Jacobs. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Good. No reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. I thought when Josh Jacobs was coming out of the University of Alabama, he was an absolute perfect fit for John Gruden's offense with the Raiders, and it turned out, in this case, I was absolutely right. Led the NFL rookies in rushing a year ago, 1,150 yards. In fact, the only rookie to top the 1,000-yard barrier. This kid is a workhorse who can carry the football in any situation and catch it out of the backfield. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. He had to absorb another little bump there from the defense, another incomplete pass. We've seen a lot of that tonight. They've come after him all night long. Nothing but pressure in his face. He's trying to stand up there and make throws. It's hard enough to do when the pocket is clear. When you got all those people in front of you, it's impossible to have a good completion percentage. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. Working from the gun. It's Carr. Going for it all. up fourth down. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Carr. and they get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Hey, 
After the penalty, it's Jones. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Jones, the ball carrier. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Again, it's Jones. So that one will get him halfway to the first down marker. Seven yards makes it third and seven now. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Bucks on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and seven. Operating from the gun, Brady. Crosby drives him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. A 46-yard punt, four-yard return. And the Raiders will take over now, first and ten. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Carr and the Raiders come up first and ten at their 36-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Looking sideline, incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here, you've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Throwing again. Carr. This will be caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards on the play, first down. On first down, Carr. Complete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over him, and they got there to break that one up. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. To throw again. Carr. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. The Raiders on third down. It has been a disaster. 0 for 8 thus far. This is third and 10. seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football they haven't been on the same page quarterback and receivers heck they've been on the same grease board when you draw plays up they haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines nothing's worked for them they've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements to no avail and this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49 yard line and Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 just shy of midfield at the 49 and he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones and this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory Corey Littleton there on the tackle but they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. 
After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Jones. And he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. No gain. His carries tonight, they're getting up there. So maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They get the first. The decision to run on third and medium winds up being a good one. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. Jones. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. It's a pickup of three, and we have now arrived at the two-minute warning. Brings up second and seven. Coming up on second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Yards on the play, and it's third down. And a heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. Try and run for it with Jones. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. A gain of five. First down, Tampa. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Brady going to throw here to the end zone, but it's incomplete. They're certainly not letting up on the pressure in this one, and oftentimes you hear this expression, all gas, no break from defenses. But in this case, it's the offense still throwing the football up big in the fourth quarter. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. A give to Jones. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Las Vegas.